What's the number one question that you get when when uh, a, a young woman wants to enter in religious life or even just explore it? What do they usually ask? How do you know? How do you know it's God's calling? How do you answer that? I say it's uh, in through prayer because God's love language is prayer, right? And so you need to enter into prayer to be able to kind of get on that wavelength, uh, I like to call it, to be able to know. And um, you can't really know God's will if you're never going to ask him, if you're never going to listen to him, right? Mm. You got to talk to him and converse with him. And usually I invite them to go into adoration because uh, Mother Teresa said, in the silence of the heart, God speaks. Um, listening is the beginning of prayer. And mm-hmm. so I invite them to go before our Lord and really to enter into prayer, to be before him and avail themselves before the Lord. And that's really the beginning of how you know. But at the same time, I assure them, if you don't know completely, it's okay. It's like you're stepping into that unknown and it's okay to step into that unknown. It's like that uh, the movie um, Frozen, uh, when you know, Elsa goes into like into the unknown, she has like that perfect song. And so I, I gotta say, like, it's like when I listened to it the first time when I saw the movie, I was like, wow, that's exciting. Exactly, like what these girls need to like to hear because uh-huh. you're stepping into the unknown and it's okay. Um, it's okay to step into the unknown. And so I really assure them that that's okay. And it's because at the same time, the, the vocation is a mystery and it's okay to step into a mystery and continue to discover. You don't have to know in order to take the next step. Are there any other big misconceptions that uh, that women have when they're exploring entering the you know, religious life? Yes, there is. And it usually happens uh, after like the first, second or day after they come to a retreat with us. They're like, this is not what I expected. <laughs> and I'm like, what did you expect? I expected like prayer 24-7 and sisters like frowning and looking down all the time, <laughs> their eyes downcast, you know, because they see sisters as something like uh, solemn uh-huh. or very serious. And you think we pray all the time. Oh, we don't. We have a very balanced life, especially as Dominicans. Uh, so you, we have apostolic life. We have community life. We have study life, prayer life. We come home, we recreate, we do community. Community is a really big thing for Dominicans. And so that's like one thing that really drew me to Dominican uh, is their community life. And so we're very well balanced. So you, you spoke of recreation. What do you, what do you do on your free time? Games. Please. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, sisters, we have recreation time as community. And so we play like uh, family board game tables, like okay. Uno, Skippo, Rumi Coop, things like that. Okay. Uh, no PlayStation? No. <laughs> Actually, I don't even know how to function that thing anyhow. So no. <laughs> that would be awesome. Let's <laughs> do the sisters. <laughs> See uh, the sisters. Play. I'm going to get you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We probably need to not go that route. Yes. <laughs> Too competitive. Yeah. Now, other things, are there any other misconceptions that, that young women have about the entering, you know, religious life? They find that we're not, um, they think that we don't have a very joyful life. Mm. It's, it's another another misconception that I find. And so they find that as soon as they consider a religious life, um, even if they ever do, they are afraid because they find that they can never be happy. Oh, um, so that's uh, that's one, and it's it's because I find they have to give up everything when they enter the convent, uh-huh. and so this this fear of giving up and fear of no attachments and fear of just not belonging, um, it's it's something that really strikes at them. But it's not until when you enter the convent do you see that when we give up everything, it's where we find most joy. It's when you're able to detach yourself from everything that you have been attached to, do you, are you able to attach yourself to your true ultimate joy, um, who is God. And so when they come in, they that's the first thing that most of the ladies notice is like, wow, you guys are so joyful and sometimes I find that I'm actually I'm not that joyful sometimes I'm tense I'm stressed and so you know I frown Mm -hmm. but somehow they don't see that they see something beyond that because what radiates forth from us is not us it's Christ who radiates that joy um, our union with him and so that's what really attracts them is that joy and that's something that everybody is looking for that peace that joy that happiness that yearning to be fulfilled and to belong and so they experience that when they come and so it's a really beautiful image when they first come to reach treat they're kind of hesitant they're even like am i doing the right thing as uh-huh. soon as they enter the convent oh my gosh the gate's closing in on me um <laughs> but but when they leave it's completely different it's an amazing transformation wow that's fantastic do you have any experiences with uh, 
uh, with young ladies whose parents are not supportive, kind of the way your mom was. Yes, yes. There, there are quite a number of parents who um, are not supportive of those who are discerning religious life of their children in particular. They'll be like, okay, yeah, another another person's child, go for it, but not mine. Um, uh-huh. So they have that attachment to their child, which is a good thing. I mean, you love your child and, and all that. Um, but I do have quite a number of parents who are hesitant. And it's because also because of the misconceptions they have of religious life and they'll be cut off from their child or my child will be unhappy. So but it's not until they are interacting with the sisters themselves, that they re- that the, those misconceptions are kind of like put away, are they more open to it? So I encourage like for families to really go and visit a convent, go go pray with them for some time, go have dinner with them, um, with the sisters, and just see that they're we're really normal, um, <laughs> that uh, we're very happy. And it's then, not a life of torture. It's right? not a life of torture, <laughs> right, right, right. We're, we're not encaged either. <laughs>